Hi, I'm Brian from TheEpicenter.com. We're going to be running some footage that we shot uh, testing the BioLite stove uh, for the third day. Um, day one and day two, we had a lot of problems uh, come up. And it was, uh, you know, partly because we were trying to use this as a generator and also as a heat source for the cup charger at the same time. So we tried to use this as a heat source for the cup charger. We tried putting a plate here and setting the cup charger on top. We also tried uh, setting the cup charger directly in the burn chamber on top of the burn chamber. And uh, what we decided in this test was to go ahead and use the firebox stove as the heat source for the cup charger. And then we used the BioLite strictly as a generator. We didn't put anything on top. And uh, we had a lot of suggestions from people on our YouTube channel to uh, just use sticks as the fuel source in here and feed it constantly every minute with fuel. And that's what we did. Now, with the uh, firebox stove, we just fueled it up and added fuel occasionally, but it took a lot less effort to keep this going than it did this. And uh, you're going to see that in the video. Now, I wanted to show you a couple more things. Um, the BioLite has a thermal electric generator module in it that's about this size, and the cup charger has one in it that's about this size. Okay, this produces a lot more power. Um, and this produces power continuously. So as long as there's heat and there's water in here, uh, this generates power. Now the water is the coolant. Even when the water is boiling, it's still cooler than the temperature of the fire. So that temperature difference lets this generate electricity continuously through a USB connector. Now on the BioLite, it, it has a fan in here. It's air-cooled. This is water-cooled. And for the most power output, the manufacturer says to run the fan at full speed. And that's also what we did in this test. Uh, that creates the greatest temperature difference uh, because it's air-cooled. That air goes in through here and cools this side of the module. And then it uh, uses the heat from this probe that sticks into the burn chamber. So we used both of these to charge uh, iPhones. And both of, the, both of the phones were 100% dead before we started the test. Uh, and so anyway, we're going to join that test right now. At the end, there'll be some more information about how this is constructed um, and the size of the modules and some info about the cabling and some other details about uh, other models that we have. This is a 3-watt model. We also have an 8-watt, a 12-watt, and a 40-watt model. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, so the first phone has woken up, and that's this one that's hooked up to the cup charger. Uh, the BioLite is outputting power. The, the uh, bar is green. We're keeping it very well fueled, uh, keeping the flames up on top. So uh, we're actually sitting at six minutes right now, and uh, so six minutes to power this phone up, and here it is. Okay, we're at 11 minutes and the phone hooked up to the BioLite has turned on. Both of these are charging right now. We've moved these phones down to get them away from the heat since our table is so small. And uh, the one hooked up to the BioLite right now is up and running and it's got a 5% charge and this phone that's hooked up to the cup charger is at 5%. So we'll go ahead and keep an eye on these and we're going to keep the uh, fuel going nice and hot. Okay, well, we had a feeling this was going to happen today. The weatherman was right for once. Um, we're at 17 minutes. Both phones are still charging. I'm telling you to get a shot in there how fast that fuel burns in the bio light. Yeah, it does. It's, it's tremendous, isn't it? It's, it's constant. Look at that thing. Can I do something on camera? Yeah. I have created fire! <laughs> We are at 59 minutes, and uh, we're at a point where we're going to need to dump the, the contents of the BioLite. We can't get enough sticks in here now. There's enough debris in there. Uh, so we want to make sure that we keep this really, really well fueled. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We've got a bucket of water here, and we're just going to disconnect this, dump it, and then we can start up again. So uh, that's what we're going to do next. We are at an hour and 19, hour and 19 minutes, and uh, we're going to check these phones and see how they're charging. 
Okay, now right now the BioLite is not outputting. This phone is at 35% and the BioLite's at 10% and we have been fueling that constantly. Um, so, you know, this, this is the, the exact situation that we had over the last couple of days. The amount of time that the BioLite outputs has been getting shorter and shorter in comparison to the time that it's off. And it doesn't seem to matter how much fuel we put in there. We keep this thing raging, a raging inferno. And the thing about the firebox stove, we fuel that up and we don't have to mess with it. So, you know, once again, I'm not sure if this BioLite is defective or what the situation is, but, you know, 10% versus 35%, same amount of time, uh, good heat, crazy amounts of flame at an hour and 40 minutes right now and the BioLite is outputting power again. I'm going to turn this on and you see that's charging. Now this is at 10%, okay? And this one from the cup charger is at 40%. You know, we are keeping this really... Did you hear that? It just turned off. So you see the light is not on right now, even though we have great flames. We're at an hour and 49 minutes right now, and the BioLite just turned back on. Um, and so it's, you know, outputting right now. So, anyway, that's it. We're going to keep firing this up. We are at uh, 2 hours and 6 minutes, and we're going to check this again. 15% on the BioLite and 45% on the cup charger. We have not used the BioLite to do anything other than charge. We have made sure that it's fueled constantly. Uh, the natives are restless. Fourth of July is coming up, which is pretty fun. Anyway, so um, that's kind of the gist of it. We're at two hours and 17 minutes. This one from the BioLite is at 15%. It's not actually outputting right this second, but it was a, a couple of minutes ago. Now this phone that's been hooked up to the cup charger is at 50%. The purpose was just to show the difference in terms of the usable amount of power. So that's about it. The rain's coming down. Now the BioLite is air cooled, so it's got a um, it's got heat fins here that have to have air flowing past all of these fins to be able to cool this side of the module. So this side collects the heat, brings it into the into the module, and then this side needs to be cooled. So there's a fan down here, which uh, pulls the air in from outside, brings it down here, and then blows it out. Now in comparison. The uh, cup charger uses water as a coolant, okay? So you would fill this up with water, and eventually the water boils, um, and it comes up to 100 degrees C, 212 Fahrenheit, uh, but that's still cooler than the heat uh, from the fire. So it acts as the coolant, even though it's boiling. It looks like it's got a module in here that's about this size. This happens to be a thermal electric cooler module, not a generator, but just to show you the relative size. Okay, now in comparison, this is the module that's on the inside of the cup charger. And you can see there's a lot more, uh, it's a lot larger unit, so it can produce more power. It actually sits inside of a cavity inside of here, but I just wanted to show you the relative size of the different modules. We had a couple of questions from people on our YouTube channel about how the phone knows how, to, how much power it can draw. And uh, actually the charging cable and the dock are not involved in that. I want to show you how this actually works. What I have here is I have a power pack that's configured with two jacks. One is 500 milliamp and the other one is uh, 1000 milliamp. Okay, and what happens is this device uh, puts um, different voltages on the data lines. For this connector, it's two volts on both data lines. 
and on this connector it's 2 volts on one and 2.8 volts on the other. That's what tells the phone how much power it can draw. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration here. We have a meter rigged up and this is self-powered uh, and it's measuring the power from the uh, charging lines and then it's also passing through these two wires which are the data lines. So I want to show you what happens when you plug this into the low power port. This is the 500 milliamp port. And if you look down here, you can see that it's drawing less than 500 milliamps. It's uh, 480 milliamps and about 2 watts, 2.2 watts. And you see the phone's charging here. Now, if I move that connector to the other port, the high power port, okay, watch what happens. Now you see that the power's gone up to 4.5 watts and it's drawing less than 1,000 milliamps. It's, right now it's drawing uh, 950 milliamps. And you see that the char phone is charging. Uh, and obviously it's going to charge a lot faster um, on this setting, but it's actually the device that's providing power that tells the phone how much power it can take. This is what the 8 watt model looks like. Uh, we call this a pot charger and it outputs power to a box here that regulates that power to 12 volts. Okay, then it provides 12 volt power to cigarette lighter outputs. And you can either use the 12 volt power or it comes with these adapters to allow you to charge USB devices with this. Now we also have a 12 watt model and it looks very similar to this, it's larger. Um, and then we have a 40 watt model and I'll show you the 40 watt model in a moment. One of the things I really like about the pot charger is you do have access to the unregulated output. Now this particular uh, model is an 8 watt and it outputs around 19 volts at normal operating temperature. So I've rigged up sort of a special application here where I wanted to be able to charge a lead acid battery and uh, to do that I've got a solar charge controller rigged up and I've also got an output uh, coming from the solar charge controller uh, where I can have 12 volt power and I can also plug in these adapters to be able to charge USB devices so whatever power I'm not using on this connector that power gets stored in this battery which is a pretty cool application. The last thing I want to show you today is this unit. This is the 40 watt unit and that also fits on the firebox stove. Now this is uh, water cooled except it no longer has a container for the for the water like the pot charger or the pan or the cup charger. Um, it's got connections here and a couple of hoses connect to this and then they go off to the water source and it could be a stream, a pond, a river uh, and at the end of one of the hoses is a small pump and then connected to all of this uh, to be able to run the power to the pump and take the power out from this is a control box that also has a lead acid battery in it uh, and uh, that's got the control switches and all the connections so this put, puts out 40 watts and it's set up to output 12 volts and then again you can use the 12 volts for whatever you want now 40 watts is enough to be able to run a small DC to AC power converter so you could actually have a little bit of AC power. Uh, it's also enough power to be able to run a small you know, netbook, something like that, and charge as many phones as you want. So anyway, we're going to be doing a whole video on this unit, the 40 watt, and this is called the fire power. So we'll, uh, we'll be doing that, so keep an eye on the YouTube channel. And if you're not already a subscriber to our YouTube channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notice when we put out new videos or we announce a sale or something like that. Okay? For theepicenter.com, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.